Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we are starting with a Chris Bumstead physique update, a rather full physique update, he shows his legs, back, everything basically. So here, a look at his front lat spread, just such a shame that we don't have this in classic physique. Surely he is thinking the same, but he's just not saying it out loud, he needs to be a good boy, he needs to be a good representative. He can't complain about the division. Front double bicep insane. Now, it'd be stupid to talk about whether he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia or not. Look at the legs. Look at the thickness of those legs. It would be just unnecessary. Of course he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia. Of course. Who else would? Really, that's not really the question. The question... There is no question. The point here is just looking at this and admiring it. His physique looks phenomenal. It seems like his back came up even more. Look at the upper back. How much density he added to it. So basically he's he's eight weeks out and he looks shredded for eight weeks out. I mean, this is great conditioning. So it seems like this is gonna be it has a potential to be his best shape ever. I don't think he was ever this lean at eight weeks out and he's eating a lot of food, so there is a lot of room to play with. And uh, eventually I'm sure he's gonna be shredded, like peeled to the bone. And also it seems like he grew, so how much muscle can he actually add? Chris is in a great position, he weighs a lot and that means he can diet down without worrying about the fullness. If he was doing the bodybuilding, he would have to be more conscientious about not losing a lot of size and the roundness, the fullness. But in classic physique, he, he's right there, he's perfect with his weight. He can just, you know, not worry about a thing and just get shredded and look amazing and destroy everybody else. The legs, the legs look great, as usual. He didn't even shave them yet, which is surprising to me, but overall, great body fat percent for 8 weeks out, it seems like he gained some muscle, I and mean, we're gonna see that as the show approaches, because he's one of those guys who are pushing the things hardest as they are approaching the show, he's not using a lot of gear in the offseason, and as you can see, as he's getting leaner, he's looking bigger and fuller and rounder, look at his front double bicep, just ridiculous, such an amazing physique, and yes, the winner of 2021 Mr. Olympia Classic Physique, no doubt. No matter which bodybuilder we are talking about to say they're gonna win a show without a doubt, it's always a bold statement. What about Rolly Winkler? Is he going to qualify for the Mr. Olympia by winning Spain or whichever show without a doubt? No, 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 I mean, he looks amazing, he looks absolutely phenomenal right here. I mean, look at this, he does look big, probably not as big as he once was, but he doesn't look small. And he looks conditioned, and he looks full, I mean, look at the vascularity through the shoulders, through the arms, through the chest, all the chest striations and feathers and, and all kinds of things, everything, he just looks ridiculous, his entire body. But, it's not the role we once knew, and I think that's what's hurting him, I think the judges expected to see him bigger, and he's one of the freaks, so that's, I think that's why, I think it's about the impression the judges get that uh, placed him lower at Tampa, I think he was still good, just wasn't his old self. Now, he decided to actually skip on Tampa, he is not doing Texas, next destination, as he says, is Spain. Unless he pulls out of that one too and focuses on Arnold, I don't think he's gonna do it, he, he's saying here that he's gonna do it, so I don't think he would be doing this if he wasn't sure, but maybe it would make sense for him to just skip all the shows and just do the Arnold, because that will give him more time to grow, and he has the shape, he has the conditioning. If he manages to maintain this conditioning and just come a little bit bigger, fuller, I don't know, how, I mean, just carving up more or just kind of growing into the show in some way, muscle memory is an impressive thing, you saw it too many times, like with Kevin Levroni, so if Kevin was able, why Rolly wouldn't? I think he didn't have enough time to, to train because of the gyms being closed and that's why he lost a lot of size. I don't think it's his age, I think it's just that, so now when he has enough time to grow and to do everything, and his body right now is in a prime state of utilizing the food maximally, because he was dieting and now the body just wants to use everything you give it, and I'm sure him and his coach notice, and they are utilizing every moment of these couple of weeks between the shows, every bite of food I'm sure is getting where it needs to get, and I'm expecting Rolly to be a little bit better at Spain than he was at Chicago. Can he win Spain? It's gonna be a challenge for sure. Is there a potential? It's always potential. I mean, it's Rolly Winkler, guys. We'll see what's gonna happen. It's gonna be very interesting to see him on stage once again, for sure. Is this guy right here, this monster right here, Steve Kuklo, the reason why Rolly decided not to do Texas? 
Because if that's the case, I think it's a smart decision. It seems like nobody is beating Steve Kuklo at Texas Pro. I think he decided very firmly that that's the show he's gonna qualify to the Mr. Olympia with. All these recent photos are looking just phenomenal. He is getting in probably his best shape ever. I don't know, we're gonna see that on stage, but it seems like this is gonna be the best Steve Kuklo we ever saw. So he looks bigger than before, he looks more conditioned. This size, wow, wow. And you guys know that he's taller. Taller bodybuilders. He's like in 280s on the stage. The only, well, I wouldn't say problem, but the only thing that I don't like about his physique, and I'm sure many of you guys uh, feel the same way, and I'm sure you heard me talk about this before, is the deep separation the, or the lack of it, especially in his legs and basically everywhere else. He gets peeled, he gets conditioned, he, can, he gets vascular, his skin gets so thin, but uh, it's just genetically, I mean, he doesn't have deep cuts, deep separation. I don't know what is the reason, but that's just the case. He has that kind of, that type of look to his muscle. So is that gonna be a trouble enough for him to lose against Ian Valier, for example? I think he's the, he's the biggest threat to Steve. I don't think that's gonna be enough. No, I think Steve's structure, muscularity, conditioning and everything will suffice and he will win Texas Pro. So talking about Ian Valier, there is an interesting story that Ian posted. And it is regarding the very Texas Pro I was just talking about. A lot of people ask him why is he doing Texas Pro. He's already qualified. He won Tampa Pro and he's qualified for the Mr. Olympia. Why is he potentially taking the opportunity of another bodybuilder to qualify and to get to the Mr. Olympia stage? Why is he doing that? A lot of people asked him that and this is his response. So he says, I've had a lot of questioning as to why I'm doing Texas after I already won Tampa and qualified for the Mr. Olympia, which honestly baffles me. I am a professional bodybuilder. My job is literally to compete, win, collect prize money and work my way up the bodybuilding ranks by beating more and different top competitors. Would you think it's weird for a pro golfer to compete in multiple G uh, PGA tour events to win purse money and multiple titles to add to their resume my job is not to let others qualify for the mr olympia and let prize money and titles be won by by others it's to enter competitions and try my best to win how do you think dexter won 30 shows in his career by doing one a year and the second he was qualified for the mr olympia he didn't do any more because it was uh, mean to take others chance to qualify no he actually even knocked me out of 2019 Mr. Olympia by doing the Tampa Pro to collect his 29 to win. Should he have been like, oh no, poor Ian deserves to be at Olympia and he needs that money more than I do? No, he wants the title, he wants the money, just like every other professional athlete in every other professional endeavor. Guys in the 90s and early 2000s used to do 4, 5, 6 shows in a year, in a, in a row on the European tour. You'll need to get your competitive spirit back. Even in the real world, if you already have a job and want a promotion, and someone else applies for the same job who doesn't currently have a job applies for it also, should you just step down so they can have a chance because you already have a job and they don't? No, obviously not. Also, I want more experience. I want opportunities to step on stage, perfect my craft, work on the kinks. I also flew in from Canada already and the shows are one week apart and I'm already in competition shape so it would literally be silly not to do a show in my opinion. And he also says if I had it my way I do literally every single show and win every single purse and every single title. He also thinks the damn same. So what do you guys think? Do you think he has a point? I think he does, I think it's pretty convincing what he said right here. It makes only, it only makes sense. I mean, why would bodybuilders let other bodybuilders win? If you can compete, you, you should compete. And if you want to win, you need to beat everybody, whoever shows up. It is the way things work in all other sports. And it was basically the way bodybuilders used to compete back in the 90s and early 2000s. So I don't think this is actually a question. I don't know who, who actually argued about this. I mean, it only makes sense for me. If you guys have different opinion, tell me down below. By the way, this is Ian, uh, two days out of Tampa. So he was conditioned. A lot of people are saying that he was off. I mean, maybe he was not as sharp as he was at the Mr. Olympia, but off? Come on, <laughs> this is not off. He is not fat or anything like that. I mean, look at the veins on his adductors. That means he's pretty lean. So he was shredded, basically, for a guy of his size, as much as he can be, as, much as, as many details as he can have, he had them. So... 
you guys shouldn't expect this version of Ian at Texas Pro. We should expect uh, a little bit better version, because he gets better every show he does. As Chris stresses right here, Chris Bumstead in the comment section. So we're gonna see better Ian Valier. Is that Ian Valier gonna be good enough to beat Steve Kuklo? I still don't think so, but it's gonna be a hell of a show, I tell you that much. And you guys know who's gonna be first to make a video on YouTube about that show as soon as it happens and who's gonna have the most interesting and fun video, so you guys subscribe to my channel. For the end of this video we have John De La Rosa in his off-season. He says off-season update. Is this really off-season? I don't know. To me he looks three weeks out. <laughs> so is this a joke? Is he prepping uh, secretly? And he doesn't want to tell anybody to the shadow kind of approach? And he just wanted to show this photo and just, you know, confuse us by, by saying it's an off-season photo. I don't know. I think he's competing. He looks like he's prepping for something. What is he prepping for? Spain, maybe? Maybe even Texas? Could he do Texas in four days? Maybe he could do. I mean, maybe he could do well. He looks shredded. I don't know. If this is really an off-season, <laughs> why would this be an off-season? Look at his lower belly, like. There's only, like, one layer of skin and that's it. He's dry, he's shredded. Look at the chest striations and the vascularity and the striations in the shoulders. I don't think this is off-season. I think he's prepping. I think he's uh, just messing with us. He's keeping it a secret. The only thing that looks like off-season here is his beard and his hair. So I think that's the only thing. His body is yelling, show prep. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best and bye-bye.